All right, so let's talk about timeline jumping. The spiritual community has this deliciously annoying habit of exaggerating basically everything. Uh, and timeline jumping or quantum jumping is definitely one of those things. It sounds a lot cooler than it is. Let's get into it. So yeah, hyperbolic. It's the word for the community. You know, there's all these types of ideas like bloodline trauma healing, you know? Which basically just means that you need to get rid of the bullshit that your parents taught you. The same thing is true with timeline jumping. And I want to talk about a specific chapter in the book Reality Transurfing that probably a lot of people don't touch on. It's one of my favorites. And it's called Forward to the Past. And it's an interesting chapter because the beginning of it, he starts talking about really like how the shape of reality changes, how we're basically always sort of moving through uh, reality in a way. Now, and reality is moving as well because reality is alive. Reality is a living thing. We have this conception that like reality is just static. It's like this just static thing that just is. But the birds are chirping, the leaves are falling to the ground, the flowers are blooming, spring is here, then summer, then fall. So as far as it goes, we are living, we are alive in this environment that is also living and alive. And we are a part of that, and it's a part of us, we're all connected to that. So reality is a breathing, living organism. It is not static. One of the really cool things that he says in this chapter is that reality is changing, but it's kind of like the minute hand on a clock, right? Like we look over and then we look back and the clock has moved and we didn't see the movement. Everything is moving so fast, right? Like a, like a wheel, you know, that's spinning and it looks like it's static, right? Like it's going so fast. It looks like it's still. And that's kind of what's happening all around us all the time. It's just constantly a wave collapsing, collapsing, collapsing. All these causes are slamming into an effect, effect, effect so quickly and so rapidly that we can't even perceive it because it's happening so fast. So when it comes to timeline jumping, uh, again, you know, this is one of those super duper uh, cool sounding terms that's really not that cool uh, if we get down to it. Um, but we start with ourselves, right? This is us. This is you right here. And you start out perfect. And you still are. You're perfect. You are absolutely perfect. A, a, a fingerprint of God. You are a snowflake, uh, not like that, but like a water droplet. You have a perfect shape to your soul, right? So you come out into the world and you are perfect. And if you were left to your own devices to find and embody your purpose, you would go straight across this path of perfection. This is the perfect lifeline here or timeline, or whatever we want to call it, and that's you going down it, okay? And if you were left to your own devices, if there wasn't so much stuff going on, well, you would just cruise on through per perfectly, right? Unfortunately, that's not the way that, that life really is. Now, actually, it, it, it's fortunate to, you know? It's cool. We get to experience these challenges. And ultimately, infinitely, in the quantum world, or the dream world, or the mental world, the other part of this unseen reality that we can't perceive with five senses, everything that ever was, is, or will be exists on the other side of the physical reality. The physical reality being a mirror, the mental being the cause, the physical being the effect. The, the allegory of the cave, the shadows on the wall, those are the effect. And the mental world is the prisoner in the cave whose, whose, whose shadow is being cast on the wall, right? We identify with the shadows on the wall and we're like, yeah, that's reality. That's reality right there. That's the effect of reality. That's not reality. Put yourself at the cause. Now, here's what happens. You, perfect little beautiful you, God, you're perfect. I can't say that enough. You start out on a path of perfection. 
But then things start happening, right? You have, you have to deal with family, uh, family bloodline, you know, trauma healing. Your mom, you know, drops you. You go to school and you get bullied and you, you know, you go through all these things. And so you're traversing down these lifelines. You've got pendulums now that are, you know, happening and they're catching you. Your friends are like, hey, you, you want to be an actor, but your friends are like, uh, we play baseball, so you, you conform to that, and you, now you play baseball, and so now you're on this lifeline, right? And so then you go to college, and you, and you get a degree, and then you become a civil engineer, and you never wanted to be a civil engineer. You were just trying to appease your parents. And now here you are on this lifeline where you really never wanted to be, and it's far, far away from the perfect lifeline that you wanted to be on. What's so cool about this chapter is that it's never too late, and that's the truth uh, of, the, of the matter for any, any of us, because you're still perfect. You're still this person, right? Like, at the soul level, right? Like, you've conformed to all this, and now you're the sort of representation down here of whatever this lifeline is, right? You've gone to school, you've gotten your civil engineering degree, you've learned how to, you know, do advanced math and, like, deal with whatever civil, I don't even know what civil engineer does. <laughs> Wow, that's just the truth. And so, but you've done that and you've got, you know, you've done all these things. And it might seem like it's too late, but forward to the past, forward to the past. Man, I love a paradox and this is a good one. What he's talking about is that it's not possible to go forward and backwards laterally. Okay, so we can time travel, he's saying, right? He's saying you can time travel. The universe is alive. You're living and all of these realities exist in the dream world. So you can't go backwards on this timeline, but you can jump to another one. So we can forward to the past where we can find ourselves, our most perfect, you know, purposeful identity, which still exists within us by adjusting here to get back to this perfect lifeline. Now, had this perfect lifeline played out, you know, maybe you met that perfect partner here, you got the perfect puppy, you know, the perfect wedding, all of this kind of stuff, here, 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 and here. Well, in reality, it doesn't work that way because we're crushed by the world and, and, and basically, you know, twisted and manipulated to conform to pendulums, to ideas of other people, uh, to do as I do, I believe is, is how he puts it. But that doesn't mean that we can't jump from here back to that perfect lifeline. And I'll give you an example. I myself, when I was a kid, I wanted to be uh, a cast member on Saturday Night Live. That was my big dream. And um, I, that's, that's, I was just obsessed with Chris Farley, uh, Adam Sandler, all the people on Saturday Night Live. And I thought, what a cool thing that would be to do. But, you know, as we go here, baseball, right? My friends played sports. My friends, you know, uh, and then later I didn't make the ba basketball team and it hurt me and I started smoking drugs with the bad kids and then later, you know, like wanted to drop out of school and then finally did and then I found Jesus and then I went to church, you know, so like my, <laughs> my lifeline, like, you know, all over the place, you know, it's like, wow, wow, Jesus and then basketball and then all these other things. So I literally pop into this lifeline, this lifeline, this, I'm jumping all over the place, right? And so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about jumping timelines. Now, of course, I wanted to get back to the perfect lifeline. And sometimes I don't even know what that is, right? Like in, in my heart, I wanted to be, I think, like really ultimately it's the essence, right? Like, so the essence of being on Saturday Night Live is, is playfulness, it's, it's, it's parody, it's having fun with friends, it's comedy. And so <clears throat> that's the essence of the thing that I wanted to do at that time. Now, I wouldn't, you couldn't pay me enough, I don't think, to be a cast member on Saturday Night Live now. That sounds terrible. Like Saturday Night Live is like, ugh, it's cringy. It's not as funny as it used to be. It's not edgy anymore. 
you have no freedom. So, you know, I could have gone down this lifeline and that might have been the thing. But beyond that, the essence of the thing is I wanted to make comedy. I wanted to make people laugh. I wanted to bring joy to people, right? Like that's my purpose. And so <clears throat> I find myself here after going to college, going to Costa Rica, working in Outward Bound, you know, living in Peru, uh, coming back, becoming a tree farmer, being a raft guy, uh, you know, all, doing all these things, all, jumping all these different timelines, right? Like all these different sort of scenarios. And the world sort of conforms to you at that stage. You conform to it at that stage. It's like this interesting meld. And ultimately realizing, you know what? I, I really want to help. I want to bring people joy. And I want to do, I want to do comedy. So I started doing comedy. And then I started doing these YouTube videos because I felt like that was really a good marriage between what the world needed and what I personally could help with, right? So like I talk a lot about purpose. Purpose is so important. It's the one most important thing. And my purpose, it took me several years to figure out. I have a lot of pain around it. That's why I teach it, is to bring people joy. Now that might sound silly. It might sound uh, abstract, but I believe your purpose is actually abstract. And, uh, and it's something that you can connect to and do in multiple functions. So for me to get back to this perfect lifeline, right, just means that I'm actually doing my purpose. So I, I basically saw this pendulum or this idea, externalized idea of Saturday Night Live, which is just sketch comedy, right? That's all it is. It's just comedy. It's just performing. It's production. And that's what I've been doing over the past several years. Comedy, production, and not necessarily on Saturday Night Live for Lorne Michaels so that he could boss me around, but actually I get to do whatever I want. And right now in the society that we live in, in 2021, you want to be in a position of independence. You do not want to be beholden to Netflix, HBO, uh, ABC, CBS. It used to be the dream for a comedian to get their own sitcom. Now it's golden handcuffs like you can't believe, right? Who are the best comics right now? Ryan Long, Brent Pella, JP Sears. Uh, as far as like, you know, doing their own thing, that's what you want to be. That's what you want to do, right? If you're doing comedy, you want to do your own thing. And you might be the next TikTok sensation or whatever. And so for me, it was really about getting back to this essence, right? And so that's what forward to the past means. It means to come back to yourself, to heal your inner child, again with a lot of drama. Thank you, New Age. You are incredibly emo. Um, so that is the idea, the basic idea of jumping timelines. It's not that you're jumping timelines to some other reality. There's one objective reality. There's one dense material reality. You are jumping timelines of your own subjective experience within that reality. In reality, it is moving. It is alive. It is constantly changing very rapidly, and it is responding to us. But we're all creating it all together. So don't go drinking the solipsism poison. I cannot warn you enough. I, you know what happens. I, I, I won't even tell you. It's fine. You, you want to go down that road? Be my guest. Anyway, so this is what jumping timelines really means. Uh, it's all about forwarding to the past, getting back to our truest self, finding our deepest purpose, and being our most authentic expression of love, of freedom, of God, of quantum, of the field, of whatever it is that we want to call that thing, that sort of holy, spiritual uh, thing that is so bit so much bigger than we are and so much more powerful than we are when we connect to that higher power then we can really be our most authentic and have our best expression in the world so that is how to jump timelines 101 and 102 all condensed into one short video i hope this was helpful please go check my friends out at contentsafe.co uh, because there are timelines in the future where this content may not exist on this platform, but it will be in other platforms because contentsafe.co has been distributing and will continue to distribute this content across the internet so we can continue to watch a lot of people's content uh, on some of the alternative platforms. 
you know, go over to the alternative platforms. Library ain't so bad. Odyssey's not so bad. Um, I like Float a lot. It's built on a blockchain, you know? Like, start thinking about what you're contributing to this world because you are influencing it. You are co-creating it. You're not the only one. And that's why it's really even more important what you choose to do because your power of choice will have a butterfly effect and it will make ripples through reality. So go to my website, get an eight page ebook on how to find your life's purpose. It'll be the, one of the smartest things you've ever done for yourself to get to the point where you can find your perfectness because you are perfect. You are absolutely perfect. All the layers that you've uh, sort of added to that, those aren't perfect, but you at your core essence, you are perfect. And I want to see you be that perfect expression of that, or at least get pretty close. And that's good enough. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like, subscribe, and sub share. <laughs> like, please, uh, nah, you know what to do. Have a great day. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one.